Intelligence. Energizing your email marketing with Kate Barrett. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Intelligence. I'm Kate Barrett, and I am your host and the founder of eFocus Marketing, a specialist email marketing agency helping you to use email more intelligently. Today is our monthly Intelligence Brand Spotlight interview, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Najma Salam from Help for Heroes. Naj has worked for Help for Heroes since May this year and is a digital marketing executive. So I'll let her introduce herself properly. But welcome, Naj. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. It's such a pleasure. I'm so excited. And as I've said to you before, I'm an email geek. So this is the peak of uh, media for me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, like I said, I'm a digital marketing executive, but my role at Help for Heroes is I take care of all emails. I like to think of myself as the email gatekeeper, as it were. Um, and I also take care of the PPC. But uh, I would say that a lot of my experience and my resource goes into the email side of things. So, um, so whether it's building emails or whether it's approving them, reporting on them, and you know, feeding back on strategy and all that great stuff to do with email, that that's under my remit. Fantastic. So, yeah. like so many people that are, are probably listening or, and watching this episode, mm -hmm. you're responsible for much more than email. So, what does a typical <laughs> day look like for you at, at Health for Heroes? How do you balance all of these different tasks and your passion for email? Well, um, I'm. I always say I'm incredibly lucky to be doing something I genuinely enjoy. Um, so th that balance is always there, if, if that makes sense. But in terms of an average day, there is no average day, which is why I got into marketing and then into email marketing, because, you know, no day is completely the same, which is perfect for me. I think I would get very bored very quickly if it was. Um, but just some of the daily activities I do. Um, so as a bit of background, I came from the private sector. I worked in a travel company company and before that uh, with an online retailer so as you can imagine it was very different coming to a non-profit environment um, so a lot of the focuses are very different as well where you know before you're concerned about ROI and you're concerned about sales and promotions for charity like Help for Heroes a lot of it is about recruitment or getting the messaging out and there's such a spectrum of messaging you're putting out there which makes it really exciting of course um, so part of the things I do in my day is uh, it could be I'm um, approving emails from our regional coordinators. So I spoke about these great men and women before at um, the event we were both at, of course, at Dot Digital, but they are the people who put together the activities and make that really great safe space for our veterans. And um, for every event that they put together, they send an email out. So I just kind of scan them over. Or it could be that I'm building an email from scratch that goes to all of our supporters and all of our beneficiaries. So it, any day could be, you know, a mixture of those two things. Um, and everything so, in between, yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's always so much going on, right? And this yes, is the fantastic is. thing, but let's take one step back and just give us a really quick introduction to what Help for Heroes do and the amazing work that you guys do. Yes, so um, very simply, Help for Heroes help the wounded and the families of the wounded. And when I say the wounded, those who are medically discharged from the military. And it could be um, uh, hidden wounds like you know, PTSD and all of the uh, mental illnesses. And of course, those who are the physical as well. So both those things. And um, it's such a great charity to work for. You know, there's such a great support system. And it really um, bleeds into every part of the charity. I even find that... Uh, the people that I work with are incredibly supportive, very, you know, um, proactive with the things they do as well. And I think that that's part of the great thing of working for a charity anyway. Um, and I think you Definitely. might find out if you talk to any of my counterparts at any of the other charities as well. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So in terms of using email as a communication channel for for the for the business to communicate with those veterans to communicate mm. with volunteers. I mean, how vital is it as part of your marketing mix? 
Um, so I, I am personally of the opinion, not by so, but I think that email is such a fantastic convergence of everything that happens in marketing and communications, and it's very much the same in a non-profit charity sector. So um, it's, I would say it's incredibly vital because when you're a charity, you're very much about um, getting your message out there. It's about getting your message out there, whether it's you need recruits to help, whether you need donations, or whether it's signing a petition. Um, you know, whether you want people to get politically motivated, uh, it's, it's all comes down to email. And of course, um, we use that omnichannel marketing strategy. Of course we do. Um, you know, so we use uh, paid social, we use, you know, um, Google ads, all sorts of things, offline as well, of course. But I think everything sort of stems from that email strategy, because I think ultimately that's where we get a lot of our data from as well. We understand a lot by you know um, supporter habits and beneficiary habits. We send out surveys from emails as well. Fantastic. Yeah. That's a really important point, isn't it? It's about hmm. listening not only to what people are saying and telling you when it comes to email marketing, but to yes. what their behavior with the emails is actually telling you. So you've got yes. all of those different kinds of data coming in that you can then mm. use for your strategy going forward. And I know you've got lots of exciting things planned, so <laughs> I'm going to come back to that in, in just a minute. But yes. you mentioned about your previous experience being in retail. So what made you move over to the, the not-for-profit sector? And what do you think your experience coming from retail to not-for-profit, how do you think that's going to benefit you in terms of creating that strategy going forward? Oh, it already is benefiting my strategy, actually. And I think retail is a really great place to start if you are an email marketer. So that was one of the first sort of um, jobs I had that had that uh, email marketing experience in it and I just fell in love with it straight away um, and you know the thing with uh, online retailers is that the data you have such a wealth of data you have your you know purchase history you have the way people are interacting with emails I thought that was fantastic and I worked with the letter room which was one of the biggest retailers on the high street so um yeah so it was it was an incredible way to understand what email marketing was all about and obviously from there i learned quite a lot about strategy you know we found out that every time you sent out an email you would be sure to get like two percent three percent um you know conversion back so it, it's exciting because every time you build an email you get feedback so and that's incredibly gratifying um, and then after that, I went into an archaeology travel company. It was called Specialist Journeys, and they have a group of um, travel brands in the East End. But I became, I first started there as an email marketing um, executive, and then I moved up to a marketing manager, which I think is a very natural sort of uh, succession for someone in email marketing because you do understand a lot about the data and your customer base. But um, from there, I understood much more about oh, you know, our base was a bit older, they preferred offline, so it was understanding how digital could support the offline and vice mm. versa as well. And it was very different to being part of an online retailer, it was all online. So that was, again, just an added layer. And I brought those two experiences into Help for Heroes because we have absolutely everything. You know, I feel like we have many faces where sometimes yeah. we're B2B, we have corporate partnerships, we're B2C because we have a shop. Um, but then sometimes we're a pure charity where we're just talking to people about a message. So I think, uh, long story short, is that um, I've brought all of these different strategies and I've tweaked them slightly for Help for Heroes. And, I'm, and I think ultimately, I think charity is not anyone's fault, but due to time and resource, and maybe not as caught up onto email marketing strategies as people in the private sector are. And mm. clearly that's time and resource, isn't it? So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, so bringing my past experience, I think it's, it's been really exciting for, for my work at Help for Heroes. I feel like I'm making a real difference. Fantastic. I think there's a couple of things there that are really important. I think the first is about the time and the resources mm. and that it is so important to 
fight for that time and resource within the business because email is such a foundation for everything that you're doing and it is a mm -hmm. very cost effective way of communicating directly with people yeah. in a way that they want to receive email so we see this from mm -hmm. all the statistics that you know email certainly isn't dying it's not going anywhere you know it's yeah. that tool that people want to receive information through so if you are lacking in those time and resources, which many businesses are, not just the not-for-profit sector, but you know, many mm. businesses find that time, resources, budget are an issue and something that gets in the way of growing their strategy. I really do, and I, I know I'm biased, I know you're biased, <laughs> but I do think that it's worth fighting for that because we know that email has one of the highest return on investments of all of the digital channels. Um, yeah absolutely absolutely but you've got to be using it in the right way mm -hmm. and i think also you know when we say the right way that does differ per business so you can have sure. best practice um, yes. you know <laughs> that gives you a foundation of where to start from of what we know has worked for other businesses but you mm -hmm. have to test for your business and see what works and i think another point that you brilliantly picked up on there was how you have used your experience in a few different areas, a few mm -hmm. different types of businesses, and you're now bringing that into a non-profit arena. So many yeah. businesses that I talk to, you know, they might ask for examples of how other businesses in their sector have mm -hmm. done something different or done something oh, yeah. as an example of this or that. But actually, look outside your sector. Mm -hmm. Look at what other types of businesses are doing. So if you're not for profit, look at retail. If you're B2C, look at B2B and vice versa. You know, we should be yeah. looking outside of our own businesses for inspiration, but okay. also why do we need to rely on examples of other people doing it? Let's try it. That's the beauty of email is that we yeah. can try things relatively cheaply on a small portion of our database before we roll it out to the whole database. Yes. Let's get creative. Let's be the inspiration for other people and let's lead the way with our email marketing. Yes, that's completely the spirit that I try to approach email with. And that's why I'm always coming to it with a smile on my face, like, you know, 99% of the time. It's because <laughs> it's that, you know, it's that very enterprising spirit, you know. Um, and one thing I will say or impart to most people is that you are absolutely right. You shouldn't look within your own industry. And that's something I say to people all the time. Um, my, my teammates, um, you know, so I... I sign up to so many different email newsletters. I think there's about 60 unread emails in my inbox right now <laughs> that are waiting for me to just scroll through. But, you know, I thought I you were going to say 60,000. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's just from today. Um, yeah, so <laughs> so I, I, li I subscribe to um, all kinds of blogs, podcasts, you know, publishing sites. I think the New York Times is a really good example. They've got so many different newsletters. So I love looking yeah. at different areas of experience. And one thing I will say as a marketer is that you have to live your life and that makes you better as a marketer. So I don't always listen to marketing podcasts and media because I feel like I need to expand my experience outside of those mm. things. So I love listening yeah. to podcasts which pick up on, you know, sort of like the weird and absurd. And I sometimes have like a light bulb moment and that's always great when that happens. Yeah. Of course you listen to the intelligence podcast though. Of course. That's like <laughs> the main one I listen to, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, anyway, it's about expanding your experience, isn't it? You, you, yeah, you have to. Um, marketing is very much an uh, yeah. empathetic um, job, I feel like, if you're doing it right. So, yes, so, and especially yeah. with the, you know, it's not an industry, but the area that you're in, it's. Yeah. You know, I've got a, a podcast coming up very soon about this, actually, about emotional intelligence and about really mm. understanding who you're talking to. And I cannot yes. think of a sector where it is more crucial than in the not-for-profit charity sector because you Absolutely. are dealing with content and topics and it's not just content and topics that is the whole point it's people's feelings it's their emotions it's their lives and you have to really 
respect that with your email marketing. So with that in mind, what's your current send strategy and what kind of things have you got planned for the future? Because I know that, you know, having joined not long ago, you've got a lot of plans. So what's going on <laughs> at the moment to start with? So what's going on at the moment is obviously we have different audiences. We have different email newsletters for those audiences. But I feel like, okay, we're, I would say, a third of the way there in terms of our email strategy. We, we're doing the same thing. We're sending regularly and we've got pretty clean databases. Great. So what's, what's regularly? So what's regularly so, for you, Nadge? Uh, so it depends on, like I said, there's so many different bases. So we have fundraisers, so that's people who've taken part in any kind of fundraising. And then you have volunteers, people who would shake a bucket outside of Tesco or maybe a volunteer at one of our events. So there's all of these different bases. But I would say at least um, each of these audiences have something going out specifically to that base maybe once a month. And that's pretty regular. Um, okay. But again, that's mm -hmm. a brilliant point that you... Mm -hmm have different strategies for different mm -hmm. sections of your audience because again they are people they have different needs they have different wants from your campaigns yes very key and i think the most interesting part of help for here is just how different these people can be so someone who has volunteered their time to like i say um take part in the tesco national collection is very different to someone who's on the fly decided to raise some money for help for heroes at a tough mother mm -hmm two very different people, or they could be the same. And that's the point, you know, so there's so many overlaps as well. So mm -hmm. I think, so looking at what we've done, I think that's great. How can we elevate? How can we be more sophisticated? So the next step and part of my work I'm doing now is defining each of these newsletters as a product, as they're having their own flavor, having their own personality. So if you're a volunteer and you open up a newsletter, you know, ah, okay, volunteer newsletter. And not just because it says it in big black letters on the top right, but it's about the visual identity and things like that. And, you know, and a part of that as well is how can I add value to each of these newsletters? How can I make someone's life easier or kind of get them, you know, if there's a question in their mind, how can I answer it without them having to Google it up? You know, so mm. there's, there's all of these things as well, being there as soon as someone's even thought about it. Um, so that's very much part of my sort of long-term plans, um, developing and finessing, I think. Yeah, and and yeah, so working on so much. Yeah. Yeah. So working on the content for each so that it really connects with what their needs are at yes. the right time. And mm. so you've mentioned newsletters there. And again, mm. for your for your sector, for charity, a lot of this information is going to be informational, educational, mm. inspirational content that, you know, traditionally comes in that newsletter. But do you have space in that send strategy for specific donation campaigns that you have going mm. out and, and other email types as well? as the newsletter yes so i think we've um in the past done the thing that so many things have done which is we haven't really thought about our um newsletters and categories it's very easy to think about an email is an email and you send it out well not so it could be operational it can be transactional it can be marketing and within those there's different kinds of newsletters as well so part of my work now as well is to really understand okay what are our operational emails going out what are marketing emails? How do eat, they each serve their function? Um, and in the best and optimized way they can. Um, so obviously the operational emails, what I'm be looking at is how do we automate every single one and take the manual work away from, you know, the people within the charity so they can concentrate on what they're doing best. And that is the personal phone calls, maybe the handwritten letters. So the emails can just be taken care of and running in the background and doing what they're meant to be doing. So yeah, you're right. There are so many different types of emails going out. You can't even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I can, absolutely. And, and getting, getting yeah. a handle on those is, is yeah. a really big job, making sure that you have mm. that manual send strategy 
planned out so that you know what's going on. Like you say, anywhere where you can feasibly take those manual emails and Mm. automate them so that they're sending the right message to the right person at the right time and you can use the technology to help you. You know, I know that you're relatively at the beginning of your your journey in terms Mm. of the sophistication of the email marketing program over at Help for Heroes and that's why they've brought you on to help really move that forward. So in terms of triggered Mm -hmm. campaigns, do you have any going on at the moment or what what are your plans there so we do have some going on in a moment but like i said it's about elevation it's about sophistication and finessing so um rather than say a single step email we want to do a nurtured journey you know um really keeping up that momentum say for example you're a fundraiser you've signed up to do bake for heroes so you thought okay great i want to raise the money for help for heroes i want to organize a bake event and then life gets in the way so if you were only to receive one email right at the beginning of that journey, you're kind of going to forget because kids, you know, um, a really great Netflix show that's coming out, <laughs> whatever, it could be anything. <laughs> life. You know, life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think with a journey, it just, you know, we can put in little motivational tidbits. We can put in recipes. We can put in health, um, you know, healthy tips for people who don't necessarily want to eat a load of sugar, but still want to take pie. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all kinds of things that you can add value and utility. So that's what I'm working on as well. Our trigger campaigns that are a journey, they come in yeah. at just the right time and keep up the momentum. Yeah. Um, and the one mm-hmm. thing that I always stress as well is that attention and trust are a kind of ask to right at the beginning before you can get anybody to do anything for you. And that's what we're trying to nurture and you know and then make into a a wonderful beautiful blossom (laughs) (laughs) so that all sounds amazing in terms of taking those steps next steps moving it all forward so what's your best performing campaign at the moment or alternatively since you've come on board what's the thing that you're most proud of that you've implemented or can you give us some results Mm. for anything that you've done so far Yes. Well, unfortunately, I can't see um, exact statistics and figures. I'm so sorry about that. (laughs) But (laughs) but one the there there are a couple of things that I'm really proud of. Um, One of the things is looking at the design of our emails and tweaking them so they're just that much more balanced. They're optimized. So recently, we sent out a Solus email, and that's uh, an email that's outside of our normal um, email contents uh, calendar, but has a very singular. intent to it and this one in particular was we needed to recruit people to our Tesco national collection so I looked at the design and said this the, the, the design of this email absolutely needs to be different to the rest of our emails so I gave it a light background nerdy email stuff you know made sure that it was incredibly um optimized for mobile i think when i looked at it uh dot digital said there were 57 test sends on that particular email <laughs> it just really went sent for it, it. <laughs> yeah i really went for it because a lot of it was just tweaking and i think that's that's yeah. what great email design is about it's tweaking it's it's you know understanding how does this balance with that and um yeah. we we got um, quite a few volunteers out of that. And one of the things I was really proud of was putting in a social share at the bottom as well. So, which we hadn't really done before. So it was just as simple as saying, look, if you can't volunteer for us this time, uh, could you ask your friends and family to see whether they could? And people really, really clicked on those buttons and shared as much as they could. So that was something- Sometimes it's just the simple things, isn't it? That you can add to what you've been doing. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's it's the little things like that that I find really gratifying. But one of the things that I'm working in the back end that I'm really proud of is making sure that data flow is happening. Um, uh-huh. Our data um, and getting our house in order as far as data is concerned. Um, but Absolutely. that's something that's not really going to show on the front end, but that's something I hope that will really help our strategy moving forward. Okay, so you're getting all of that brought together. So what does that entail for you? Does that entail doing a data audit to see what you've got already, what you're Mm. missing? What are the new data sources you're bringing? Can you elaborate on any of that for us? Sure, only in the most vaguest terms, Kate, but just because you (laughs) (laughs) But um, So essentially, uh, to keep it as broad as possible, ensuring that all of our different parts of data are coming together in a beautiful synergy, and it's kind of getting pushed into our ESP, which is not digital, and vice versa. 
Um, and that also includes the shop as well, which is great because I'm really drawing on my yeah. online retail experience. I'm drawing on my, um, yes, my customer um, relation experience as a marketing manager. All of these things yeah. are coming together. So bringing in uh, the retail data, bringing yes. in, so you mentioned surveys earlier, perhaps yes. website behaviour, is that something that you're, you're bringing in? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm dragging little so tips it's all out really coming together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's all coming together beautifully. Um, yeah. And what's great about that is that I think really speaks to the true email marketer experience because I, we have an insights team at Health for Heroes because there's such a wealth of data there. So we just need to. <laughs> and I say to them that email marketers and data people are like cousins. You know, a lot of our, <laughs> a lot of what we're concerned about is, is uh, overlaps. So I, I always feel that as an email marketer, I'm like one half uh, data insight analysis oh, person. That, absolutely. That yeah. I think if, if you had a, an email marketer and they were a stick of rock, throughout the core of that rock is data, right? It's all yeah. the way through yeah. because if you yeah. don't have the right data, you don't have an email marketing program or certainly mm. not one that is going to get you the best results. So the fact that you're bringing no. in all of these strands mm. is absolutely amazing. Yes. And then how are you planning to use this data? So are you planning wow. any fantastic trigger campaigns? Are you planning any personalization? Is there anything there? that you can share with us on what might be on the plans for the future <laughs> well I, on my um incredibly long wish list which is on a scroll mm -hmm. <laughs> it's about the length of the screen yeah. um one of those things on yeah. there is uh making sure that we have these great beautiful trigger campaigns that get people as soon as they've donated or maybe they've abandoned the process in some way and we can send them inspirational content about how every little bit matters and one of the things that I'm trying to bring into our email programs is that level of empathy for our supporters, saying that we know you're busy, we know you've got lots on your mind, we know that you get so many emails, but it takes five minutes just to read through this email, understand what we're about, and hopefully we can get you to, to get on our side and support our veterans in the same way we do. Um, so, yeah. yes, trigger campaigns are very much at, at the height of it. I think uh, nurture journeys are very much what I'm all about. Once I feel like we've got our data in order, our houses in order, as, as when it comes to the trigger campaigns, because that all stems from the data, we can then look at some really great, sophisticated things like um, personalization based on all the different data points. So um, I've heard you speak about this before, actually, Kate. Um, we have contextual data, you have behavioral data, all of that great stuff coming into the emails. So yes, it is going to be a very exciting year, I think. Brilliant. So you mentioned that you're using dot digital, but are there any other tools mm. that you're currently using or thinking about using when it comes to your email marketing campaign? So for monitoring, mm. for actually getting the emails built, you, you, what are you using at the moment? So um, what we're using at the moment is is dot digital. That's at the heart of everything we do. Um, obviously, we have a lot of third parties when it comes to um, storage of the actual data. That's all external, of course. Of course. Um, but uh, in terms of actual reporting, so at the moment, I'm doing a lot of the reporting at the moment. And, and that's, that's, I think, an education piece, because um, from my experience before, a lot of what you do in your email marketing stems from that really important reporting piece, is how you report on things. And one of the things that I've started doing is we look at industry benchmarks, of course, but we also want to look at our own benchmarks for the last 12 months because we are different to everybody else in the industry. You just are. You're, nobody is exactly yes. like software heroes. So, um, yeah. so hopefully we'll be looking at things to help automate that. That's, that's on the, the list for me. Um, but in terms of uh, things that we're using externally to Dot Digital, not a lot at the moment. And I think that's purely because we want to make sure that our foundations are absolutely correct before we start adding things on. And as a platform, they've got a lot of different tools for you to use. So there's, there's a lot <laughs> yes, there for you yeah. to move forward with anyway. So that's that's fantastic. Yeah. So thinking about what you've got now and what you want to move forward with, what do you think is your biggest email marketing challenge at the moment? And how are you planning to mm. overcome it? So 
So um, the challenge extent, uh, goes back to exactly where we were talking before, it's just data. Um, yeah. And one tip that would absolutely say to any small company starting out, or no matter where you are in your journey as a business, your data has to be in order. You need to be so strict with your data. You have to understand where it comes from. You have to understand where it's going at. Because I've seen companies spend so much money trying to get get that in order. So many. Yes. And it, it's very common. <laughs> yeah, very especially common. with GDPR, right? Everybody is, yes. is looking at their data, how it's stored, where it's stored. So whilst you're doing all of that, mm. figure out what you need for your email. So I always say to my clients to, to do a data audit. So I mentioned this earlier. Look at what you've got now where is it stored in your company? So this is what you're doing, right? Is where yeah. is all of that different data stored and making yeah. sure that you can access it all. If you can't access it for your email marketing, why not? And what do you need to do to get access to it into your email service yes. provider? And then once you know all of that, you can figure out where the gaps are. So what's yeah. the data that you'd love to have that you'd like to use in your strategy going forward? And how yes. do you get it? Is it a case of doing surveys? Is it a case of adding another data point onto your sign up form? Mm. Is it progressive profiling? Is it behavioral data, purchase data? What is it from that circle that you're missing that you need to bring it and then you figure out how to go and get it. So yeah. that's exactly what you're doing right now. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. How are you inside my head? This is absolutely what I've been thinking about. <laughs> get out of my head, Kate. So, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so, so that challenge is, is yeah. we have this incredible wealth of data, but what's the story yeah. behind it? What's the history of it? Mm, you know? Love that. Because we need to know how these people came to our database so we can speak to them in appropriate ways. So say, for example, someone's at a party and, you know, they might have been come from like public transport and they're incredibly harassed. They don't want to go straight into the party games. They just want to take a moment, <laughs> take five minutes, yeah, yeah. you know, but someone else might have just come in on a limousine and they're just like, they're ready to go. So that's, <laughs> that's how I think about it. People have come to the party in a different way. You need to treat them a little bit differently. I love that analogy. That's, that's amazing, Nash. I love that. I think that's definitely a key takeaway from everyone for this episode. Mm. So, yeah. okay, all of that sounds brilliant. You mentioned earlier that you've got 60 emails sitting in your inbox that you haven't read yet for today, just for today. So, <laughs> just you will obviously yeah. follow a just for today. So you obviously follow a lot of different companies email marketing. So who do you admire? Who do you always look out for their emails from? And why do you admire them so much? This is probably a really obvious one, but really good emails.com. <laughs> I just yeah. love really inspirational, emails. right? Yeah, incredibly inspirational. But what I really enjoy, and this is such a weird, um, sort of specific thing that I think email marketers will, will pick up on is the, the, the messaging on the CTAs. Genius. So they just put out an email that was about emails that had a yellow scheme to them. And the CTA button was call me mellow yellow. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I it's think clever. I always look yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. It, um, I always look out yeah. for the email camp campaigns where everything comes together the subject line the preview text the, the the imagery the context and the cta button it becomes one beautiful package that's what i always look yeah. out for um so uh, i always look at online retailers because i think they've incredibly advanced when it comes to email marketing um yeah i i think uh I can't think of a specific one because I, there's always elements of different companies that I like more than the other. So, yeah. um, for example, I had an email campaign the other day from religion that had such a great use of animated elements in the email. And it was just people yeah. putting on a jacket and taking it off. And I think stuff like that really brings emails to life. So, um, I love so, that you yeah, said I, that. I, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think you're so right because whenever I give examples to clients, I always say this is a great example of this, but even within the same email, there might be something that I would have improved on or I would have tested mm. or I think there's always things that we can do better just in life. There's, there's <laughs> things we yes. can always do better, um, but it gives it gives us yeah examples. So I think there's always pieces from different companies you can pick out. So mm. I absolutely love that you've said that. 
So you've given us quite a few tips here and some insight into what Help for Heroes are doing. So if you were to leave us with one last email marketing tip, what is your big tip as a marketer who's in the trenches doing it? And sorry, that was a really bad pun, wasn't it, in terms of in the trenches, so I apologize for that. Um, but you know, getting down and dirty and, and yeah. working on the email marketing every day. What's your one big tip? My big tip, and this was the subject of my talk yesterday, which was respect the inbox, is absolutely respect the inbox. And what I mean by that is respect that people have so much on their mind. There's so much that they're taking in. There's so much that they're putting out. Is you know, yep. you only have so much headspace. So I would yep. say as an email marketer, be very aware of, of the limited headspace. Because like that campaign monitor um, statistic, which blew my mind, and it's still blowing my mind, is that office workers can get up to 122 emails a day. So yep. when you think about that and how your email sits within that little world, you know, you're probably going to drift away into a folder somewhere never to be seen again, into the archive folder. So have a think about how are you getting to people in the, the most efficient, optimized, and ultimately the most empathetic way you can. Um, and from a charity point of view as well, just because someone signed up to your newsletter, it doesn't mean they're going to do anything about it. You have to try and have that conversation with them, be as intimate, be as personal as you can. So um, I would say, put yourself in somebody else's shoes, ultimately, be the most empathetic marketer you can be. I absolutely love that. Thank you, Naj. I think that's a great tip to leave us with. And it rounds up everything that you've been saying today. Mm -hmm. And I truly understand who your audience is, understand your data, mm -hmm. speak to them like people, respect the inbox, right message, mm -hmm. right person, right time. You know, I think those are the key takeaways that I've got from, from what you're doing at Help for Heroes and what you're working on. So absolutely. thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And hopefully the listeners and the watchers of this episode have really got a little bit of an insight into what you're doing at Help for Heroes and that it's helped them get some inspiration in their own campaign. So <laughs> thank you for joining me. For everyone watching and listening, please do subscribe on iTunes, on Spotify, on YouTube. Make sure you look out for our next episodes and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. <laughs>